the Stone Press Podcast. Spreading awareness within our community. 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 Hey neighbors, we are back again with another mayoral candidate. We hope you have been enjoying the election series and that you have listened to all of the city council candidates, especially if you are in Districts 2 and District 4. So we are very excited today to bring to you Mr. Kirby Frazier. Hey, neighbor. <laughs> Look, you did it. Hey, neighbor. <laughs> We're very excited to have you here with us today. Well, thank you. And I know that we don't have a ton of time. We're trying to make sure we get you in, yes. get everything that you need to say get you out of here, right? Nobody wants to stay here at my house that long. (laughs) (laughs) So what we're going to do, we're going to dive into the questions. And then at the end, we're going to have you talk to us about your campaign and where we can find you. So to get us started, what is one thing, because we need an icebreaker now, what is one thing that you would do if you could not fail? First thing I would do if I couldn't fail it's the establishment of the city police department in the city of Stonecrest because everybody keep asking me that on the campaign trail. So that's one thing I would like to do. Mm. Do police hand out snacks? Sometimes. You know, well, then I'm for it then. Mm-hmm. I'm all for it. We all know during this series I've been really caring about snacks. So I'm just going to make sure that that's built in with every candidate. Yes. Awesome. Yes. So no, that is a great thing that you would do if you couldn't fail. And I enjoy the fact that almost all of the candidates have said something that was city related that they would do if they could not fail. So obviously I'm not meant to be a mayor or any other elected official because the thing I would choose has nothing to do with any of these people. (laughs) All right. People first. (laughs) Right. Me first. (laughs) So that is wonderful. The police department, but what is your overall vision for the city? Oh, thank you for that question. My overall vision for the city is basically to establish, reestablish our economic development policy that we have established currently in the city of Stonecrest. We need to make certain that we have economic development and affordable housing. They are in correlation with each other. They need to work in conjunction. That will make the city grow. And that's my short answer. <laughs> if you wanted to give them a little bit of a longer answer, that's okay too. That's but we'll save it for the next question. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> All right. So... Seeing your vision, what do you also see as the biggest problem the city is facing and how would you address it as and, mayor? And that's a good question. I have to go back to the economic development again because I just got through doing a meet and greet uh, maybe about a week ago. And that was one of the biggest things we talked about again. How can we make this city grow? We're not growing as fast as we thought we should be growing. It's been six years now. We have to really look at our economic development plan. We look at it and see that we bring in the right industries. Um, time at the time, again, I keep telling people, industry. Industry comes to the city. They pass through the city. We need to figure out what is going on while we let industry pass through the city. Bring them here so we can start our economic development plan, start building per capita income. Let's give the people what they need. We need to build that ecosystem. The ecosystem base is a system we set up with people who are starting businesses that support what's going on in the city. That will make the city thrive. Mm-hmm. I, you said something that dives into the next question Go for it. overall, and that is what industries will what we bring to industry? the city? Right. Good answer. Good question and good answer. And I will go straight into it. Here's, 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 here's my thinking right now. I, I know that automotive is big uh, in America. We know about the big three, but again, we still have people that come into our cities and our counties who want to use our real estate to start their businesses. Now, for whatever reason, Stonecrest seems to be in a black hole now when it comes to industries. They pass through here. But we need to figure out what's going on. Let's talk to those developers, find out what can we do as a city to encourage them to come and look at Stonecrest. I mean, we need Stonecrest to start being uh, one of those markets where, you know, we are just like Atlanta, Georgia, okay? If people talk about Atlanta, they should be talking about Stonecrest. What is, what is Atlanta doing and Stonecrest not doing? Look at the industry that Atlanta is bringing in. Look at the, the, the type of businesses, the eateries. We're talking about the art. We're talking about the music. We need to look at all that. But industry is going to bring business to Stonecrest. That would help economic development. Very good answer. And you said so many great things, but all I heard was eateries. Yes. So thank you very much. For and that I like again. eateries too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you have some great ideas 
everyone isn't going to like your ideas. Everyone isn't going to like you. So mm-hmm. how will you handle? No, I'm going to save that question. I'm going to save that I like question. That question. I like no, that. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to save it okay. because before we talk about that, I want to know how would you make yourself accessible to the people? Excellent, excellent. Now I have made this recommendation. I think the city current city administration is doing it. We need to make sure we have town hall meeting and we schedule these town hall meetings so people understand this is time to sit down and talk to your leaders, talk about the good things and the bad things. Anything that concerns them, this is the only way you can communicate. I mean, emails are good sometimes, phone calls are good sometimes. How about we set up like we're doing now, one-on-one with, with the elected official that come off the bench, sit in a chair, with, look at you face-to-face, hey, what do you want to talk about today? And you'd be amazed. I've sat through a few of those. It's just sitting out there, listening to the current administration, talk to the people, people talking back to the administration. You know, it's good to have two-way communication, but somebody has to listen, listen, listen. Let's take notes down. Let's sort of figure out how to move forward. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. And now that we know how we can get to you, how can we criticize you in person? No, <laughs> but how would you handle <laughs> the fact that people don't like your ideas, they don't like you? How would you handle criticism? That, that, and that's fine. I understand that as being a leader, you're not going to always do things that make people happy. That's one hallmark of being a leader. You have to be able to take good criticism, look at it, just, just sit there and digest it, try to understand why they're criticizing you and try to come up with a plan, try to see if you can, you, can you fix that. People are not going to always like what you do as a leader. It's tough being a leader sometimes. How do I know this? I've been in the military. I worked out in the private sector. It's just tough being a leader. So, I mean, that comes with the territory, that comes with the job. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and you don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. So, not taking things personal, what do you think is the most important role of the mayor? I understand something. I said this to a couple of the leaders, and I won't call any names because I know it's, it's tough being a leader because not everybody can be, do these jobs. But the leader, uh, first and foremost, it's the face of the city. When somebody thinks of Stonecrest, they think about the mayor, okay? They'll see that mayor's face there and want to understand what is the city really about? Go look at what the mayor's vision is and what the mayor is trying to do for the city. Now, again, I'm telling you, this is what people understand. You have to be able to accept those criticisms. This is how you learn. But when you see the mayor out front, leading from the front, and that's any leader now, you have to understand that comes with a job. That's your role. That's your duty. And you got to be up for the job. I'm up for the job. All right, Mr. Frazier, we heard you. You're up for the job. So with that being said, why should we vote for you? Please. I want you to think about what we've tried to accomplish these past six years. It's been a bumpy road. We've had some successes. We have some failures. I've heard people speak. And out there, I was listening. Don't think I wasn't listening. I was taking notes down mental notes. People say, what can we do to move the city forward? We don't want to be like other cities that have these problems with the malls, have these problems with leaders that we don't trust. Well, you know, everything takes time, but I think now that we have an opportunity here to move forward. I've heard one of the workers say to me this weekend at one of the cleanups, say, I can imagine what Stone Crescent look like 10 years from now. Mm-hmm. 10 years from now, we used to start bringing these new leaders with great ideas, listening to the people, you know, we got a botanical garden being planned in Stonecrest right now. And I'm on the Park and Recreation Committee. I'm so honored that they gave me the opportunity to work with them. I'm not an elected official. I'm just a, right now, I'm just a, a resident of Stonecrest. I want to do my part. And that's what we're doing this weekend. And we got out there together, me and a couple city councilmen, other residents, and we went out there together. We went around politics, cleaning the city up, talking to residents. What can we do to, to make the city better? And that's what we were doing. District 1 and District 3 this weekend. I'm pretty sure we'll get to the other ones later. So that's that's what I've been trying to accomplish. Thank you so much. All great information. I'm sure that the citizens are really going to appreciate everything that you shared with us today. And with that, if you could take some time, as much time as you need, Mm -hmm. to talk to us about your campaign, what you have going on, where we can find you. If you want to find out more about my campaign, please go to electcurbyfraser.com. And you'll be able to pull up information about what's going on in the campaign, what's going on in the city, and what we are attempting to do. Um, People ask a lot of questions. You'll see that on the website. People have ideas, and you'll see that on the website. 
this is all about people. This is never going to be about me. People who know me know that already. I'm, I'm a leader. I come in. I like to lead. I like to leave something behind, some type of legacy now, and I'm out of your way. <laughs> so please vote for Kirby Frazier. I'm going to be your man. Thank you so much, Mr. Frazier. And to my neighbors, vote in the know. Stone Press Podcast. Spreading awareness within our community. Community.